So the gates are open and Intergeo, the largest meeting place for the geospatial industry, opened today in Hanover. Utilizing its hybrid concept, the leading event for geodesy, geoinformation and land management reaches the geospatial community worldwide. And with that, welcome to the Intergeo TV News. And Andreas Sinning, Business Area Director at Trimbul Geospatial, held the keynote at the opening event on the, of the Intergeo Conference. In this lecture, he spoke about the importance of connecting the physical Earth and the digital world. Let's now take a look at the challenges for the construction industry and opportunities. A few minutes ago, he was in our Intergeo TV studio, and I wanted to know from him how digital is the construction site today? Yeah, that really depends on the area where you're looking at. That means where on the world you mm -hmm. are looking. In the Nordics, uh, I think they are very digital already. If you go further south, uh, it, it will be different. It's the same with the size of the pr projects. Large size already have a lot of in, uh, a lot of portion uh, in the digital part. And smaller sites are still done very, very manual. So if it's about the level of digitalization, mm -hmm. it's really a an, an, an very early phase. So it's quite different from the buildings. In the buildings industry, we already have digitalization since several years. If you think about the BIM approach. For the infrastructure, it's quite new. So that the, that's due to the fact that handling infrastructure data is far more complex than handling data from a building. Okay, thank you very much. So, you just mentioned a bit, but what do you think are the biggest challenges the industry is facing and the, what opportunities do you see on the horizon when you have a look at the future of the construction sites and the digitalization of the industry? So, the, the challenges today are, it's a several challenges. One, one is definitely to bring all the different data in one common environment. So we have data from different sources uh, which get, need to get to come together. Uh, that, that's a problem mm -hmm. because the data was not designed for, for that. So it needs definitions, it needs uh, uh, common exchangeable data formats uh, which can be used. Um, that's one thing. The other thing is, is education. So we need the people on site being able to work with these procedures. So that's uh, a question to the education. So will coming engineers will have the capability to, to use this data to really to proceed and, and, and yeah, move forward to, to get uh, uh, with these projects. Uh, that, that's something I, I think will be key if this can be successful in future. And uh, for the, the next steps, um, we'll be really finishing the first project in a complete uh, digital uh, environment. Mm -hmm. That would be my dream, really, to, to have one project managed on a digit, complete digital platform. I think that's a little bit far in future, uh, will not happen uh, immediately. But as soon as this has happened, I, I think we are at the, uh, at the stage that we can handle digital uh, construction site in this uh, kind of form. Yeah, that seems clear to me that you need the skills of the workers and uh, you need the education of the new systems, of the ecosystems and co uh, regarding connected data and so on. And yeah, but um, yeah, I have just um, another question. Um, so talking about the geospatial industry, what can the geospatial industry contribute to this development in this industry? Yeah. Yeah, we had an interesting conversation this morning after the, 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 the keynote and, and after the, the interview there. Uh, it was about where's the role of our geospatial industry in this environment. I was talking pretty much about infrastructure. But to me, the surveyor with his specific knowledge is the, one of the most important ones in this process because he has the knowledge how to handle coordinate systems which are the base for all projects. He has the knowledge to provide accuracy to these uh, systems. And I think the geospatial professionals, they have to, to bring their knowledge in and, and position them as one of the key persons in these projects, having the knowledge to 
make the foundation, the foundation for the data. And that comes from the cadaster, that comes from the surveyors in the field, that comes from the construction company. The surveyor is here really the central element in okay. this. And what role does new technologies like machine learning or the so-called artificial intelligence do play in that context? Yeah, so, so this, this comes in when it's about data analysis. Mm -hmm. So today um, you have the classic stakeout work, you have the classic data collection, but we see more and more the industry moving to, to mass data collection. So mobile mapping system gets used, imaging, so remote sensing, so you get a huge amount of data which you cannot analyze any longer in a manual way. And for, for analyzing this data, you need assistance from the IT technology. And here is where artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning algorithms come in to interpret the data and to, to deliver the results which we are no longer manual uh, are able to, to take out of the data. Andreas, let's have a look at this year's Intergeo, which was forced to one year break due to yeah. Corona. So last year we met on the digital platform. This year we're here in Hanover in the exhibition halls. And uh, yeah, so how is the vibe in your view or how, or how important is this industry gathering for the, for the geospatial industry or for the construction yeah. industry to really meet in person this year on this date? So to me, as I'm participating in the Geo and Geo since 1991, which is okay. or 1992 in Hamburg, mm -hmm. uh, okay. it's quite a while. Mm -hmm. I've been at every. So we have a good overview. <laughs> yes, I have a quite good overview. <laughs> to me, it's the tenth intergeo. The tenth, okay, it's yeah. anniversary uh, as well. <laughs> yeah. So, it's. I was really missing this because it was always the event in the year where we met people, uh, talked to people, which we usually don't meet during the year. Of course, we have customers where we have close relationships with, but it's like a family. And if you don't see the family for, for a while, uh, it's, it's not that nice. So I was really looking forward to meet people here in person. Uh, I had no expectations because nobody can tell us how many people are coming. It was clear that it's not the international event as it has been before, and we would like to get that, that back. But at least from, from Germany, uh, I think we will have the ability to talk a lot of people. So, perfect. We're at the end of this interview so that you have enough time to enjoy Intergeo and to have Thank good you. conversations and meeting. Thank you very much, Andreas Sinning. Thank you for the interview. So this was Andreas Sinning and ann katrin Bohle, State Secretary at the Federal Ministry of the Interior, Building and Community in Germany, opened the Intergeo conference this Tuesday morning with a welcome speech. And she emphasized the importance of Intergeo. Dear visitors, under this year's motto, Inspiration for a Smarter World, I invite you to explore Intergeo 2021 the world's largest and most important convention and trade fair for geodesy, geoinformation and land management, presenting smart and connected solutions and pioneering technologies. This time, smart cities and building information modeling, innovative applications and solutions will be in the spotlight. We will also shine a light on how the coronavirus pandemic is influencing housing and work in urban and rural areas, as well as the digital transformation of work processes and civic participation. Our municipalities experience all of this firsthand. Digital technologies offer new opportunities to face the challenges and to find answers to the pressing questions of our time. Our aim is to use and shape digital transformation in such a way that municipalities are better able to respond to challenges and disruptive events and are more resilient to long-term stress factors. Many municipalities have already begun working towards it. However, further progress is needed to arrive at a concerted use of digital solutions and data for the common good. New organizational, regulatory and cooperative approaches must be developed so that our municipalities can become true smart cities. Digital transformation is an ongoing process, both in terms of its multifaceted geographical impact and in terms of the many new ways it can be applied in spatial planning processes. 
In this context, the scale of planning at federal, state or regional level, which differs significantly from urban planning or the planning of specific projects, for example, must be considered as well. When it comes to digital transformation in the construction sector, we set a good example to taking a holistic approach spanning the entire life circle of construction works. This includes planning, building and operation, but also related administrative processes. We want to create the technical and legal framework for this. Possibilities for better cartographical representation of plans and for facilitating digital planning in other areas, for example, infrastructure are steadily improving as well. For example, I would like to mention digital atlases and portals in some metropolitan areas that link different data and information portals with spatial content and present them for the other planning purposes. We must ensure that municipalities remain capable of taking action and tap into their potential for shaping the future. Smart technologies are intended to help save resources, make processes more efficient and ensure greater inclusion and participation. The coronavirus pandemic also shows us that cities and municipalities will have to become more resilient and crisis-proof. For only if you make use of all existing building blocks, we can successfully support municipalities in developing new strategies for a good quality of life in the digital age. We are delighted to welcome you to InterGeo 2021 where you will meet other inspiring participants, attending enlightening events and gain a wide range of new insights. So thank you. This was the welcome speech of the Federal Ministry. And now with me is Professor Dr. Robert Zeus from Frankfurt University of Applied Sciences and a member and head of the DVW Working Group on BIM and Geodesy. And we're talking about that because this morning he was also host of the session of the technology trends, which was in a German language called From Gestern ins Heute nach Morgen. So we're talking about the technology trends and the several lectures we heard this morning. This is where we switch into the German language right now. So, damit herzlich willkommen, Professor Robert Zeus. Schön, dass Sie hier sind bei uns. Dankeschön. Ich habe es gerade angekündigt. Sie waren heute Morgen Moderator, Gastgeber der spannenden Session rund um die Technologietrends, wo Sie eben Gäste hatten von Innovationen aus Herbruck. Hexagon feiert ja 100-jähriges Jubiläum, aber bis zu neuen Technologien über Machine Learning und so weiter. Nehmen Sie uns ein bisschen mit in diese Session. Worum ging es da? Was was sind die Trends, was haben Sie mitgenommen? Ja, vielen Dank. Die, wir haben die Technologietrends in dieser Arbeitsperiode, in unserem Arbeitskreis als wichtiges Thema identifiziert, indem wir gesagt haben, wir müssen für den Berufsstand diese Themen etwas deutlicher aufschlüsseln, zeigen, was sich dahinter verbirgt und wie sich diese Themen dann auch auf die geodätische Praxis ausschlagen werden. Wir haben im letzten Jahr darüber gesprochen, was ist ähm, Blockchain, was ist Cloud Computing oder was ist auch Next Generation GDI. Und in diesem Jahr haben wir dieses Thema weitergeführt und haben gesagt, wir beschäftigen uns mit Machine Learning, wir beschäftigen uns mit VR, Virtual Reality und Augmented Reality, AR. Und im dritten Vortrag haben wir uns dann mit Sensoren beschäftigt, mit der ganzen Frage der IoTs. Und das Spannende für mich war, wir sind heute bei Zetabytes an Informationen, die tagtäglich erhoben werden, die auch irgendwo analysiert werden müssen. Und das kommt dann von den Sensoren über das Netzwerk, über die Applikationen, dann letztlich zu uns allen als Endnutzer, die wir diese Daten verwenden. Und das schloss dann den Bogen wieder zu Machine Learning, weil diese Datenmengen können wir gar nicht selbst mehr analysieren, selbst verarbeiten. Hier brauchen wir computergestützte Systeme. Und wie diese entsprechenden Technologien dann in unsere geodätische Praxis hineinwirken, das haben wir diskutiert und besprochen. Mhm. Und ich kann mich auch erinnern, als wir uns zuletzt 2019 auf der Intergeo getroffen haben, ich glaube, da war das mit auch der, der Aussage und der These, die wir dann in den Medien hatten, mit Geodäten sind die besseren Digitalisierer. Und das passt ja dann genau dahin, weil wenn Sie jetzt von den Zetabytes sprechen, äh, von den Datenmengen, dann sind die Vermesser auch damit ganz gut, äh, diese auch zu handeln. Ne? Also dass dieses Berufsbild der Geodatenmanager da genau für solche Fälle auch da ist. Ne? Auf jeden Fall. Also gerade der Geodatenmanager ist ja eines unserer Kernkompetenzen. Und auch das war heute Morgen die Frage, was ist die Kernkompetenzen der Geodäten mhm. in der Digitalisierung? 
Und ich bin der Meinung, wir haben eine ganz wichtige Schlüsselposition, denn die Vernetzung des Ortes, das Wo, in Koordinatensystemen zu referenzieren und miteinander in einen räumlichen Kontext zu setzen, das ist eine der zentralen Aufgaben in der Digitalisierung. Jeder Sensor hat irgendeinen Standort, jedes, jede Koordinate repräsentiert den Raum und wir brauchen die Geodäten, um unseren Sachverstand, nämlich das räumliche Denken, hier mit einzubringen. Und ich glaube, das wurde auch noch mal gut diskutiert und geschärft. Das war eben das eine heute, die Session, die Technologietrends. Das andere, wofür Sie auch stehen, ist, dass Sie der Arbeitskreisleiter sind ähm, von, ich glaube, Geodesie und BIM heißt die ja, Gruppe. Der Arbeitskreis heißt Geoinformation und Geodatenmanagement. Ja. Und das BIM ist eines dieser Arbeitsgruppen, die da dran arbeiten. Ja. Genau, und da gab es ja auch schon das ein oder andere Positionspapier. Sie arbeiten da dran, die Entwicklung geht weiter. Ähm, nehmen Sie uns da mal mit auf den aktuellen Stand und was jetzt Stand 2021 ist zur Intergeo. Stand zur Intergeo 2021 ist die Version 3.0. Mhm. Das heißt, wir haben schon eine Historie seit 2017 mhm. jährlich immer zur Intergeo den Leitfaden Geodesie und BIM in einer neuen Version aufzulegen. Alle zwei Jahre in einer großen Revision dazwischen immer etwas kleinere ähm, Updates und 3.0 heißt also jetzt wieder, wir haben die große Revision, wir haben über 310 Seiten mittlerweile erreicht und wir haben in dieser großen Revision das Grundlagenkapitel überarbeitet, weil über die letzten fünf Jahre hat sich doch auch in den Grundlagen vieles weiterentwickelt und jetzt haben wir also diese Herkulesarbeit geschultert und tatsächlich im Grundlagenkapitel hier ganz neue Aktionen aufgenommen, aber auch in den beiden anderen Kapiteln, wo es dann um die Praxisberichte geht, wo es um die Handlungsempfehlungen geht und über die Marktübersicht, auch da sind natürlich die aktuellen Entwicklungen mit eingeflossen. Was sind die größten Veränderungen, wo Sie rangehen mussten? Waren das dann die technologischen Fortschritte oder das Handling, wie man damit umgeht? Vor Fall? allen Dingen die Modellierung, die mhm. Entwicklung von Standards, weil so ein komplexes Vernetzen und Zusammenarbeiten funktioniert ja nur dann, wenn alle die gleiche Sprache sprechen. Und gerade in der Vernetzung und in der Modellierung dieser Vernetzung, da stecken im Moment die größten Herausforderungen. Da müssen die Standards entwickelt werden. Es gibt jetzt vom Deutschen Industrie- und Normungsausschuss DIN eine Normierungsroadmap zum Beispiel, die jetzt mit eingeflossen ist als Information, dass es also hier jetzt auch in der Normung konkret wird und damit natürlich dann auch die Softwarehersteller Produkte entwickeln können, die man dann miteinander interoperabel, und das ist ja unser Ziel, also über die Grenzen des einzelnen Gewerks hinaus vernetzen kann. Wenn wir nochmal auf dieses vom gestern ins heute nach morgen schauen, dann ist es nicht nur ein Teil einer kleinen Session heute gewesen, sondern auch ein Weg, den Sie jetzt gehen. Was genau hat es damit auf sich? Das ist eine Entwicklung, die wir seit einem Jahr aufgenommen haben, zum 150-jährigen Jubiläum des DVWs, eine Storymap, also eine Geschichte mit Karten zu erzählen die ähm, aufzeigt, wie sich das Geodatenmanagement entwickelt hat. Und aus dieser Storymap heraus ist der Gedanke entstanden, wir brauchen auch sichtbare Webanwendungen. Also wir sind ein Arbeitskreis, der macht Geoinformationen, redet über Geoinformationen, aber es bleibt eben meistens eher unsichtbar in der Verbandsarbeit. Also haben wir gesagt, wir machen Webanwendungen, die ganz plastisch zeigen, was Geoinformation kann, wie Geoinformation wirkt. Und unter der DVW-Homepage, dvw.de slash apps, also eine ganz leichte URL, kann man sich sowohl die Storymap als auch diese Webanwendungen anschauen. Und jeden Monat kommt eine neue Webanwendung dazu, die zeigt, wie Geoinformation plastisch, transparent nutzbar ist. Das ist ja bestimmt auch ganz wichtig, um Berufsnachwuchs zu sowas äh, zu motivieren, indem man es eben anschaubar macht und sagt, hey, das ist was ganz Spannendes, das hat mit Digitalisierung zu tun und eben mit Dingen, äh, die hier plastisch sind. Ne? Und die, hat, die haben nichts mehr damit zu tun, dass man am Schreibtisch steht und irgendwie über Karten allein sitzt. Ne? Genau, die Vorstellung der jungen Leute ist eher, <lacht> Informatik ist hip, aber eigentlich ist es nicht die Informatik, sondern es ist die angewandte Informatik. Und da können wir mit der Geoinformation natürlich einen tollen Beitrag leisten. Sehr schön. Vielen Dank, dass Sie hier waren in den Intergeo TV News, Professor Dr. Robert Seuss. Vielen Danke. Dank. So, und wir gehen weiter hier in die Messehallen. Across the two exhibition halls, as well as the digital platform, the participating companies are showcasing their innovations and solutions in the fields of Geodesy, GIT, BIM, Drones and Smart City. And with 55 product releases, Intergeo is once again the international showroom for world firsts, especially the team around. The Intergeo project manager, Daniel Katzer, has made all this here possible again. I met him this morning for an interview. We met 2019 in Stuttgart, right? And then we had this lockdown last year. It was terrible for all of us. And when I join in uh, this morning to, the, to this venue, to this hall, I see so many laughing faces, right? Uh, the, all, 
are keen, they are willing to, to meet in person and uh, not only digital, even we have the opportunity, as you said before, but they can meet in person and that is something very astonishing for all of us. Yeah, great. We just see some pictures from the um, setting up yeah. from yesterday. Yeah. yeah, we see hexagons, booth. There, just... there are a lot of nice booths and the, the exhibitors, they, they are willing, they're pushing, they're yeah, showing great. some new instruments and, and products here on the show. They're showing it live. I can touch it a little bit under hygiene concept, right? But they can touch it. I can see, I can see what's going on here. That's really And that's great. something very interesting. So, um, yeah, it was a tough year to all of us, especially to event organizers, but of course also to the industry and staying in contact with the industry, of course. So just describe us, how was that year, um, especially when it was long not clear if Intergeo is really happening, mm -hmm. so here in Hanover yep. or again in a digital yep. edition. Just uh, give us an overview how that was for you and the team. Yeah, well, the, the very beginning we started from, from 2020 on was we are going hybrid, which plan to go hybrid. We have to digital platform ready and we uh, love to make, meet in person again so all of us was was we, we had to organize two things digital on the one side and physically on the other side and you're right we had at least two months before the show starts here today uh, we had the permission to go live in real so we had the opportunity and we had a lot of meetings via zoom and teams and so on with our exhibitors with our partners to make this possible all in and a lot of services has been asked about questions. How can I handle digital and physically parallel as we are getting now see persons on site and we can see them online as well. So that was a tough work for us as well, but finally it works. We have more than 250 companies here on the ground. We have seen some pictures and we will see some nice pictures, I believe, within the next two days. So yeah, it was a tough time, but we could make it happen. And that's the point. That's really great. Yeah. And actually this works because um, yeah, here are uh, concrete rules for hygiene me measures, yeah. uh, hygiene yeah. concept. Yeah. So um, just tell us about that. And we also have some pictures who will show how the testing works and how the concept here works with mm -hmm. masks because we are here in the show are allowed to wear no masks. Mm -hmm. But uh, mm -hmm. usually this is the concept. Just yeah. take us yeah. with you into the well, rules. Yeah. <laughs> well, we are inside the halls right now. And yes, one thing that is uh, uh, important within this concept is to wear a mask when I'm out of a booth. Unfortunately, I have to wear a mask on the booth as well, unless we can keep the distances like we are doing right now. But um, as everybody knows from Intergeo, normally we talk within Intergeo 3D, right, for 3D yeah. models, for instance. But digital what we, twins. Digital <laughs> twins, right, I can see it on the screen. And, and that's here in, in this concept of hygiene is 3G. That means even if I'm recovered or I have a vaccination, then I can pass in quite easily. It's quite easy to come in here. It will be checked and the entrances. And if I have not these other two, uh, two Gs, uh, then we have a testing center over there. I get a quite within 15 minutes, 20 minutes, I get my test, negative test, and then I can pass in as well. So it's quite easy wearing the mask, keeping the distance. And I think that's something we, we normally do in the normal life currently. And we have learned within the last two and a half years. Yeah, Daniel, you just mentioned here are about over 250 exhibitors. Yeah. We have the expo stage where yeah. the program is full packed. Mm -hmm. We have the conference. And um, yeah, what are you looking forward to today, especially at this opening day of Intergeo mm -hmm. 2021? Well, the, the thing is that I had the opportunity from, from, from Saturday on to see what's coming up. So within the setting times and I lifted a little bit the curtain to see, okay, there are some new drones, there are some new instruments. Mm -hmm. Here's some software parts. and. Uh, I love to go around within the next three days to see what's coming more than this that I could see already within the setting up phase and it's starting this morning. So I'm taking my, 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 my trolley right now and then I'm going through the aisles and ask the exhibitors what's new LG and then I give you some, some notes about this as well. So it's quite, quite new to see instruments here. We have Hexagon, for instance, launching a new product. Trimble is doing as well. Yeah, we have them even here in the news. Oh, really? Today. Okay, I, I, yeah, I haven't seen it. Yeah, Schubler, yeah so okay. We, yeah, uh, we'll get to know what are the main highlights yeah, of Hexagon yeah. this year. Drones, robotics. So there's something special and new in here, and I love to see it. And I love to see it here in person. Mm -hmm. um, actually, you could use the the situation here who you want to say thank you, maybe partners or special good colleagues or yeah, just use the stage um, <laughs> to um, send your welcome message. Okay, well, <laughs> okay. First of all, thanks to all partners that are joining us, even digital, even here in, in person, for sure, more in person because I love and we, was, we were gambling yesterday with some, some colleagues we met two years ago, unfortunately. 
and that's the one point to the sponsors for sure, to the whole team that make it possible at least, and for sure also to Deutsche Messe and uh, the region of Hanover, Lower Saxonia, to make this hygiene concept ready so that we can be here today mm. and within the next three days. And yes, I'm inviting all of them to come here and even who can't, yes, join us on the digital platform. You find all information in here as well. You find the program, the stages, the conference in there within the stream so you can follow up what is here making possible within this restarting of Intergeo 2021. And my next team from the Intergeo project team is my colleague Tobias Plegge. Tobias is responsible for the Intergeo Expo stage. So hi Tobias, great to have you here. Hi Denise, <laughs> finally arrived in, in Hainova. I'm so happy to be here. Yeah, it's great that we can finally meet again in person and yeah, that's very fantastic fact this year. Yeah, it was about time, wasn't it? After 18 months we have finally arrived. Yes, that's great. So actually, you brought with you a full pack program of the Intergeo Expo stage. Just uh, give us a short overview. What is the Expo stage? Where is it placed? And what can we expect there? So the Expo stage is placed in, in Hall 20. Okay. But we are not only in Hall 20 because this, this year the Intergeo is hybrid. Yeah. So you can find us in Hall 20, but also on the live stream in the internet. Just go on our platform and then you will find us there because we will um, stream the whole program um, over the three days. And That's the program great. is packed with everything for the GEO community. This is great. So you work with a real audience this year. That, yes. that means um, that's also great for all the speaker over there. Because when you have an audience, Absolutely. that's so much more fun and exciting than just speaking to the camera. But of course, it's also very important that all the international visitors or who cannot travel this year can take place at the Intergeo Inter Expo stage. So what can we expect today at day one? Today, our highlights and um, we are focused today. The, start, the day starts begin with Smart City Solutions, oh, okay. everything around the city of the future. And then towards the afternoon and the evening, we are talking about um, drones applications. Wow, wow, exciting topics, future oriented. So um, this sounds very exciting. And uh, to all of you, the program will be on the uh, digital platform of Intergeo, where you have an overview or just go over to Hall 20 yes. and meet Tobias. So people can also ask questions. I guess. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Come over. We have, an, we have an open mic between the sessions before, after. You can also meet with the speakers. You can ask your questions. And yeah, we're just basically happy to be back on stage. <laughs> Great to have you here, um, Tobias. I wish you a lot of fun and exciting lectures with the speakers at the Intergeo Expo Stage 2021. And see you again later. Thank you so much, Denise. <laughs> So, as we just talked about, it's just so nice to be able to meet again in person. And uh, so this is also what visitors to Intergeo think. So my colleague Helen Weyand asked around among them. Hello, I'm here in the entrance area of the Hannover Fair, where the Intergeo starts today. As you can see behind me, the first visitors are already coming. Let's ask a few visitors about their first impressions. It's good to see uh, people again, because yeah, that is the business. Uh, you can't do everything over Teams. Uh, you need to really see your customers and see what's going on in the business. So. Gefühlt zwei Jahre her, als wir auf der letzten Intergeo waren und wir nehmen ja irgendwie jede Intergeo mit, die wir, die wir kriegen können. Äh, letztes Jahr sollte sie ja eigentlich in Berlin sein, aber da konnten wir leider nicht hin. Deswegen sind wir umso glücklicher, dass es auch in unserer Heimatstadt ist. There's nothing can replace um, face to face meeting and get the product enhanced to try it out before I recommend it to my clients. I do wish to meet people face to face um, and look at some of the new product demos in their um, store. Es ist schon schön, wenn man jetzt mal die Stände sich angucken kann und mal gucken kann, was passiert ist und in dieser Zeit und mal mit Kollegen und ähm, anderen Firmen mal im Austausch gehen kann, dass das jetzt irgendwie stattfinden kann immer wieder. Das ist schon sehr schön, ja. We are back for Intergeo, that we have chance to visit a lot of people, a lot of friends, a lot of partners from the from the Geo business. Ich 
verrückt, wie sowas funktioniert, ne? wie schnell man dann diese ganzen Konzepte da umsetzt, damit auch alles wieder funktionieren kann. Und everyone now vaccinated, tested or at a recovery. Ja, es war 1A, es ging ganz schnell. Die haben dann diesen Impfstatus ähm, dann kontrolliert. Und ähm, ja, das, war, das ging ganz fazzi fazzi. So, thank you very much, Helm. That was the Intergeo TV News Edition Part 2. Stay tuned, enjoy Intergeo 2021 and the next News Edition will be here live at 5 p.m.